Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about recombinant DNA technology. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So today, first we will talk that what is recombinant DNA technology. So recombinant DNA technology combines certain methods to alter genetic material outside an organism to obtain desired products or characteristics in living organisms. What does that mean? Suppose this is your foreign DNA or we can say target DNA and in this DNA you have the gene of interest. Now you want to cut this gene and put it in this vector DNA. So this is the process. Now when you cut this DNA and put it in this vector DNA, you want this gene to be expressed as protein and you need that protein, right? So this is the purpose of recombinant DNA technology. Otherwise you can put this gene in an organism, uh, in a bacteria, in a plant or in an animal to express that protein in that particular organism. So this is the purpose. Okay, now let's check how is it done. That means how can we perform recombinant DNA technology. So here we have some steps. The first step is isolation of genetic materials. That means the DNA should be isolated in its pure form that is free from other macromolecules. So suppose you need this DNA, you want to isolate this DNA from a plant tissue. So the first thing you need is to break down the cell, right? Then only you can get the DNA. Okay, so the DNA is enclosed within the membranes because you know that the DNA is enclosed within the nuclear membrane in case of eukaryotes and in, can, in case of prokaryotes the DNA is naked in the cytosol and the whole thing is enclosed within the plasma membrane and in case of plant or in case of bacteria or in case of fungus uh, the plasma membrane is also enclosed within the cell wall. So the fourth thing is to digest the cell wall in case of bacteria, in case of plant and in case of fungus, right? Okay, so for that you need to treat your cell with some enzymes. So we can use lysozyme if we want to break down the bacterial cell wall. We can use cellulose if we want to break down the plant cell wall and we can use chitinase enzyme if we want to break down the fungal cell wall. And now the thing is that animal cells do not have any cell wall. So it is easy to digest animal cell. You can just break down the proteins of the plasma membrane as well as lipids. So it is very easy to digest. And then along with your DNA you will get some RNA and proteins. So you need to remove those RNA and proteins too. To remove the RNA, you can use ribonuclease enzyme and to remove proteins, you can use proteinase enzymes. Now you are done. So you can get the DNA now. But to purify DNA, what you need to do? You need to add some chilled ethanol. Then your DNA will be precipitated out. This can be seen as collection of fine threads in the suspension. So now you can get your DNA. Your DNA is isolated in its purest form. Okay, so what is the next step? Next step is cutting the gene at the recognition sites. Because now you have this whole DNA, but you need these gene of interest specially. So you need to add some restriction enzymes to cut this gene of interest. Your restriction enzyme will cut your gene in this side and in this side. Then you will get your gene of interest here. 
right and you need to put the restriction enzyme in your vector DNA also because this same restriction enzyme will cut your vector DNA at two sides right okay let's check it so restriction enzymes digestions are performed by incubating purified DNA molecules that is their target DNA with the restriction enzyme and a vector DNA is also cut using the same restriction enzyme okay next next third step it is uh, to isolate the desired DNA fragment now you have your gene of interest now you need to amplify this product right because you have very little amount of this gene of interest you need more and more amount of this gene so to get that dna amplified you have to run pcr or polymerase chain reaction okay so before that you need to run the agarose gel electrophoresis why because in this reaction you will get your gene of interest as well as other DNA fragments. Now you need to specifically isolate this gene of interest from that debris. In order to do that you have to run agarose gel electrophoresis. Okay so using agarose gel electrophoresis the activity of the restriction enzymes can be determined. That means what is the activity of restriction enzyme? That your gene is cut down. Now you can get your gene of interest and you can elute it out from the debris. Right? Okay. And next step is to amplify your gene copies through polymerase chain reaction. And next step is ligation of DNA molecule. See, now you have your gene of interest in ample amount and you have your vector DNA. So just use ligase enzyme to join this gene of interest in this vector DNA. Ligase enzyme is just like a glue. It will help your gene of interest to join to this vector. Next. Okay. Next is insertion of recombinant DNA into host. That means actually this vector DNA is now ready with the foreign gene product or the gene of interest. In this case, we can call this DNA or vector DNA. This is recombinant DNA, right? Now what we can do, we can get some bacterial cells. These are some bacterial cells and we insert this vector DNA or rdna in the bacterial cell that process is called transformation when this vector is in the bacterial cell what will happen this bacterial cell will divide and this vector dna will also be divided and this vector dna contains the gene of interest this gene will be expressed as protein so now you can get your desired protein that protein is called recombinant protein okay so we can see that the recombinant dna or rdna is introduced into a recipient host cell in this case the recipient host cell is the bacterial cell this process is known as transformation once the rdna is inserted into the host cell it gets multiplied and is expressed in the form of protein okay so this is the diagram. This is the diagrammatic representation of RDNA technology. Now let's talk about the applications of RDNA technology. First of all, the RDNA technology is used in biotechnology, in medicine and research. In the field of medicines, RDNA technology is used for the production of insulin. This RDNA technology is also used in gene therapy. It is used to correct the gene defects. It is used in clinical diagnosis. You can use this RDNA technology in ELISA technique. It is used to detect the presence of HIV in a person. 
and it is also used to identify, map and sequence genes and to determine their function. It is also used in the field of food production, industry, agriculture and bioengineering. So this is all about today's lecture. I hope you liked the lecture and if you want the PDF notes of this topic, please check the first pinned comment or the description box. Thank you.